Okay, welcome to this uh, session. We're excited to have Jan Inar Gravdal here with us today. He's going to be talking about uh, virtual arena for drilling and well operations. Uh, so the uh, virtual arena is going to be an independent and open facility for research and innovation within drilling and well operations. There's going to be physical parts of the virtual arena that will be located at IRIS, but vital parts of the infrastructure will also be available through remote access uh, through a web portal. And so Jan is going to be talking about some of the development of this that's happened at IRIS and, and his role in that. Uh, the virtual rig is going to be a drilling simulator based on advanced modeling of well flow and drill string dynamics and a visualization of the, real, of the rig floor. Um, and so uh, during this presentation, he's going to focus on the development of the web client for students, lectures, and scientists, and the web client will enable remote access to the downhole simulator of virtual arena and will serve as an education development and testing platform for students and researchers within the drilling community. So just a little bit about uh, Jan Inar as well. He's a re senior research scientist at the International Research Institute of Stavanger uh, at IRIS in Norway. He holds a, a master's in mathematics from the University of Bergen, a PhD in petroleum technology at the University of Stavanger. His PhD thesis was on detection and evaluation of gas kicks in managed pressure drilling. And Jan Inar uh, started working at IRIS in 2002 and has been involved in many projects related to development and commercialization of innovative drilling technologies for monitoring and control of the drilling process. Among these are the Drilltronics and Drill Scene products, uh, which have been pioneer technologies within model based drilling automation. Jan Inar is now leading development of Virtual Arena, a large research infrastructure for drilling operations. So with that, we'd like to welcome uh, Jan Inar and, and uh, go ahead and turn it over to him now. Thank you, John. Thank you for the introduction. So uh, yes, my name is Jan Inar Gravadl. I'm with IRIS. I hope you all see the front page of my uh, presentation. So there's a picture of, uh, to the left is Oddvar Sjeveland. He is uh, head of the Ulveig Drilling and Well Center at uh, IRIS. And to the right is my, um, other colleague, uh, Liv Carlson, she works in my group, which is the Drilling Well Modeling Group. And in a way, they represent uh, the, a good <laughs> connection, what we try to achieve at Virtual Arena, a very good connection between the physical environment at uh, Ulrig, the test facility at full-scale drilling test facility at Ulrig, and the uh, modeling group, well flow modeling group at uh, IRIS uh, Research and Development uh, Department. So uh, just a, bit, a little bit more about uh, IRIS. Um, so IRIS was former Rogaland Research. So maybe some of you heard of Rogaland Research, but in 2006 we changed the name to IRIS, International Research Institute of Stavanger. Uh, so the base the, the main research areas within IRIS uh, energy uh, is, uh, of course, drilling and well technology, but also we have a quite large group on uh, reservoir technology, working on um, reservoir parameter uh, estimation. Um, so we're not very uh, big in, um, in uh, number of employees. We are around 80 in total. Uh, at Iris Energy and uh, the Ulreg uh, Drilling and Well Center. There is a total of uh, around 200 uh, in total in uh, Iris. So we have other uh, departments uh, as well, such as the Social Science Department. Uh, <clears throat> so in the picture uh, to the left, you see uh, the head office, head office in uh, Stavanger in Norway, and in the background you can see the Ulreg uh, uh, test facility. It's an offshore type rig on land. We also have uh, offices in uh, Bergen, uh, north of Stavanger, uh, the second largest city in Norway, and we also have uh, office in Oslo, the capital, and uh, in uh, Kristiansand. So 
uh, to virtual arena a little bit about the the, the background or motivation for the uh, application actually that we sent in to the uh, what's called the research council of norway so re the research council of norway is uh, funding uh, research and demonstration projects uh, um, uh, in Norway. Uh, and this project is funded by Research Council of Norway. It is uh, uh, managed by, by uh, IRIS and the uh, University of Stavanger is a uh, part of the project. But a little bit uh, about the, the background uh, first. Um, so, uh, so this is from uh, some uh, uh, numbers from uh, Peturo, Norwegian uh, oil company. It's from 2014, but uh, it's uh, uh, um, valid uh, also today. So the background is that the drilling industry has introduced new technology, which has led to an increased uh, level of mechanization of uh, equipment on the drill floor and increased level of instrumentation. And of course, this is motivated by increased safety for, for the rig crew, but also need for faster drilling uh, since rig cost has uh, increased um, uh, during the, the last decades. So now they have uh, um, decreased but uh, um, still still this is a uh, value still it's quite high so but however if if we compare drilling efficiency so this is a comparison of drilling efficiency in 1992 to 95 versus 2008 to 2013 so if we compare if, uh, drilling efficiency uh, we see that for comparable routine operations on, and this is for the Norwegian continental shelf, we are actually less efficient. Uh, so this plot shows one analysis performed by Peturo in Norway, who has compared selected but representative operations uh, when drilling from, from uh, surface to top reservoir. Uh, and this is not because it is more uh, complex operations, it's uh, routine operations should be comparable. So there are reasons to believe that although new technology has been uh, introduced and implemented, we have not really seen the effect on, on uh, drilling efficiency. Uh, and this is crucial since we know that for, for at least uh, for offshore type wells, as we are dealing with in, in Norway, around 50% of the total cost for field development is associated with drilling and completion. So, the profitability of new field developments depends very much, much on our ability to decrease these costs, uh, of course, without compromising on uh, safety. Um, so in Norway, uh, the Norwegian National Petroleum Technology strategy is given by uh, OG21. So some of you uh, know it and some of you don't. Uh, OG21, oil and gas in the 21st century. And they have uh, established some technology needs to reduce drilling costs. And number one is drilling automation. Uh, and this is, uh, it's important to mention, this is also process control is not only mechanization. Um, number two is to uh, avoid uh, drilling uh, anomalies. Uh, and I made a mark here to, to emphasize that this is it's very difficult to prove the su success of a certain technology that addresses this. How to, to prove that something did not go wrong. Number three is uh, simply faster, faster drilling. Um, so this can be achieved through better technolo technology, but also through, through changes in best, best uh, practices. And this is a complex optimization problem, actually, because uh, it's not only uh, higher ROP, you also have to deal with uh, uh, proper hole cleaning and, uh, and so on. Uh, and then number four, technology 
uh, need is uh, longer wells, extended reach uh, drilling, and and this is of course typically associated with some challenges when your your goal is to control the the entire drilling process more precisely. So for the for the first one, drilling automation. Uh, there is a need to accelerate the readiness of technologies uh, and especially those that interact with the drilling control system on the rig. So today it takes a lot of time to uh, prove a technology and test and validate, verify a technology which are interacting with the drilling control system on the rig. Drilling trouble avoidance, uh, avoidance. So you need to demonstrate. Of course, this is very uh, hard, difficult to demonstrate the success uh, of such technology. So you need to demonstrate on various wells and on various conditions. Uh, faster drilling, very complex uh, optimization. You need to educate and train people on new technologies. Extended reach drilling. You need to, since it's a very downhole uh, complex physics, it's very important that you test and validate such technologies in realistic environments. And uh, we know that uh, it's difficult to test and validate technologies, uh, especially offshore, but also to get access to test it on, on uh, real data in a real, uh, drilling operation. So these are the um, these are the main motivators for uh, the virtual arena project. So, uh, what is it? The core in virtual arena is a hydraulic model and drill string mechanics model based on more than 30 years of research and experiments at Rogaland Research and IRIS. And it, it is by far the most tested and validated uh, well flow model in, in the world and probably also uh, among the most accurate well flow models for dr drilling applications. And these, uh, both the well flow models and drilling mechanical models, would be made available to both research institutions, universities, and industry through m three main uh, in, uh, main interfaces. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a consortium by IRIS and the University of Stavanger, and the project is 100% uh, funded by the Research Council of Norway. Um, we started this year with uh, the first interface, what we call the web-enabled drilling simulator. So this will uh, go on uh, through this year and the next. In 2017, we will start development of the drilling, what we call drilling control rooms. So I will come back to this later. And in 2018, we will do the connection between um, the well, uh, the virtual wells and the physical uh, test facility at uh, uh, Ulrig at the ES. Um, yeah, so I will now go through each uh, of these three uh, modes. So I will start with uh, the web-enabled drilling simulator. Uh, as, as it's in the name, it's an online uh, simulator that runs our models for well flow and drilling mechanics. We believe, believe that at least for students and lecturers uh, today it's better to have or it's convenient to have an online simulator instead of using a standalone software that you have to download and install locally on your PC. Uh, and I can tell you already that the main challenge with this since we go to the students and to the university um, universities with a very advanced uh, very advanced uh, model. Uh, it's uh, it's a very complex task actually to 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 find a good uh, configuration tool and interface towards these uh, these complex models. 
So I will come back to that. Um, we have defined, uh, defined three user groups uh, within education and uh, research. So you have the students. Um, we we uh, will interact with, so the low, lowest level, so to say, of, among the students will be uh, those students who have some uh, experience with what is drilling and well, uh, what, are, what is a drilling operation, and the basics of it, but no, not more than that. Then you have the lecturers within uh, courses, uh, drilling courses of drilling, both on that level and on more advanced levels, such as, uh, as uh, fluid uh, dynamics and uh, drill string mechanics and so on. And then you have a third uh, level, which are the ex more experts, uh, research scientists, um, PhD students, postdocs, and so on. Uh, so the usage of it would be uh, in a classroom or a seminar between lecturer or student uh, and uh, in online courses and as a student simulator. And also uh, as a simulator for development and testing of new uh, software. So uh, what we, and we already have uh, developed both at IRIS and other research institutes and universities had developed, uh, of course, uh, especially well flow models. So what we aim for here is, a, um, is an infrastructure where you get um, re very realistic but artificial measurements uh, from a very accurate uh, model so that you can run your a uh, special algorithm um, against those artificial measurements. Uh, oh, what happened now? Yep, I hope you see the presentation again. Um, yeah, but in addition to that, so that is for, for uh, PhD students that uh, uh, work on control algorithms and so on, but also for the students and for the lecturers that they have a, a um, advanced simulator that shows uh, more realistic behavior of uh, the complexity and advanced or complex physics that you have during a drilling operations. So today, a lot of the education is based on uh, steady state models and uh, very simplified. Um, so this will, of course, be much more uh, realistic uh, in that way. Um, the time frame here is that we have uh, will have a beta version uh, ready for uh, first quarter uh, in 2017. And then uh, release candidate from available from the third quarter in 2017. So we will have now in the the, the winter or spring semester we have a, a, a deployment at the university in uh, Stavanger uh, at two of their uh, drilling courses. Uh, so. Um, this is still on a uh, development uh, level, uh, at least when it comes to, uh, to the graphical user interface. The models are all already de there, but what we're doing now is that we enable them for, um, for the web. So we have the people working on web uh, architecture, and we have some people working on the graphical user interface. Um, so the idea here is that it's going to be a very simple uh, logging and simple uh, configuration of the models so that we help people, and uh, especially unexperienced uh, students, help them to, 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 um, uh, to get into the, the, the simulator and, uh, and run um, uh, simulations. Uh, the way we will do it is that we will uh, sign agreements with the universities that want to use this uh, software, and then their students can log in by or create a, a user account by using their, uh, just their email address and then generate the password and so on. Um, we will also 
uh, have it sort of task oriented. If you want to have uh, special things that you want to look at, investigate. And as I said, this is uh, only a very um, uh, preliminary or <laughs> immature uh, what you will uh, see here. But we'll try to have isolated tasks so you can uh, be able to click on them and then you you have a particular um, interface towards a particular problem that you want to address. Or you can just say that you want to fill a uh, simulator so uh, all the configuration uh, sheets are um, um, or uh, as visible uh, uh, to you as um, there, there's no priority uh, given to them. So when you click on one of them, uh, you get into your recent uh, configurations of the simulator. Um, you can share your configuration with others. Um, when you choose uh, one of them, you can see what changes have you done lately to this particular configuration. So we'll have a large database with uh, the user accounts and the history of uh, configurations that they have used for the simulator. <clears throat> so I guess, um, I guess most of you have some uh, uh, knowledge about uh, drilling simulators and, uh, and uh, so then it's important for me to mention that this is since it's a very quite advanced and complex uh, model, it's the main challenge here to make it very easy to use for students and researchers that don't know, have so much experience with uh, with uh, simulate advanced simulators of this kind. So a lot of the input uh, will be a, a default. Uh, you can choose it by default, but then you can go in and uh, add it, uh, uh, of course, if you want. And a lot of the parameters will also be given uh, some, uh, you can click some question marks and you will get some help uh, text so that you are able to to read and uh, learn what what is this uh, parameter actually, uh, actually doing for the simulation. So it's quite a large job actually to, to do all of this and make it uh, very robust. So when you choose um, your configuration, you're able to uh, to um, to go in and see the architecture that you had and trajectory and so on. And we will try to um, divert it into sort of logical uh, configuration sheets. So in our in-house simulators that we have used until now, we have a lot of configuration sheets, but that's more for for drilling uh, experts or <laughs> PhD students that can spend some time with uh, with learning that uh, software. But for this, it needs to be sort of more or less self-explaining and on a much uh, lower uh, level. <clears throat> okay, so I don't want to, uh, and I cannot show too much of this. We're in. Um, we started now in this winter with this uh, graphical user interface and have uh, full speed now uh, during uh, summer and uh, and uh, and the fall of this year to have it ready for deployment at the uh, university in Stavanger as a, during a, as a test phase and then to uh, have a have a release uh, after summer next year. It will be uh, free of charge for uh, universities for for um, use in uh, in uh, your courses uh, for phds and postdocs we will probably take a very low uh, academical uh, fee for the industry uh, it will be uh, a higher fee uh, after the development phase of this virtual arena in 2000 summer 2018 the, the virtual arena will uh, will continue, uh, of course. So, but it will not be on a commercial level. It will be uh, so that we can uh, have <laughs> have enough uh, income to to do the necessary support and uh, development. Um, yeah, and uh, maybe I can say something about that because the Research Council of Norway, since they have. Uh, so they have granted this funding. We are not allowed actually to use it uh, too much into uh, commercial businesses. We can use it uh, to some extent, 
but uh, primarily it should be used for open uh, uh, research. But uh, for we also have uh, good interest from the industry, and we also have uh, good opportunities to use it for industry. But we can only use it maximum 20% of the total capacity of virtual arena can be used for um, uh, commercial um, business. So that's it. that is also why we we now go out and uh, and uh, say that okay, we want to 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 spread it to as many universities as we can in the beginning to make uh, to get a large volume so that of course this um, um, will that, that's sort of the success criteria for for virtual arena but also we need to to make uh, some money to to do further development and uh, support so we need to have some income come also from commercial activities Okay, um, so the next uh, mode, uh, drilling control uh, rooms. Um, and this is for, uh, yeah, also as, uh, as the web-enabled drilling simulator, is, is for research and innovation, but also for demonstration of new drilling software, control system, and uh, drilling concepts. Uh, so the f but the focus here will be on very realistic downhole simulations and a large variety in scenarios, uh, an accurate uh, um, simulation of the downhole effects uh, during a drilling operation. So the focus will not be on the surface uh, equipment and realistic 3D visualization of the rig floor and so on, but on the downhole uh, uh, simulations. Although we will have a quite good uh, visualization of rig floor, but that will not be there. It will be good enough, but not uh, <laughs> not uh, top of the, the class. We'll also have uh, both the commercial and uh, what we call open drilling control systems. So we have drilling control systems for com from commercial vendors, but also uh, uh, drilling control systems that are um, open for access uh, uh, for non-vendor specific software. Uh, so, uh, at least in the beginning, the visualization will be of the drilling, the Ulrig drill floor. So, as I mentioned, Ulrig is a full-scale uh, offshore type uh, rig. We also recently installed a uh, drilling robot. It's, uh, it's developed by um, uh, uh, RDS. Yeah, yes, um, yeah. So, they have a drilling robot uh, for doing pipe handling. Uh, which is installed on, on the rig floor. Um, yeah, so we'll have, uh, that will be the 3D visualization that we will have uh, at least in the beginning. Um, what we aim for or planned for in the beginning was this kind of setup, which we have now, uh, will probably not uh, uh, go uh, further with, but it was more like uh, that you have uh, some uh, drilling cabins, traditional gr driller cabins that uh, uh, some of you probably already have seen uh, other places and we'll also have this kind of classroom uh, type, uh, that was the idea, but this drawing is uh, three or four years uh, old and so later we found out that this is not the way that we want to do it because there are many other uh, vendors of this uh, type of uh, training facility so to say we will focus on uh, on interfaces to to research and uh, but also development uh, or commercial development of course we will build this in another way uh, probably more like a sort of tv studio type setup where you can easily change uh, rooms and configurations and uh, and uh, so on. We will have this kind of uh, um, uh, drilling simulator, virtual rig as you can see here, but we'll probably do it a little bit uh, differently than this. Okay, so um, to the third uh, mode, that is the interface to Ulrig. 
uh, from these virtual uh, wells. So to the lower right here, you see a picture of the Ulrig area. There are actually two uh, full-scale rigs. To the left, you have the conventional offshore type drilling rig uh, named Ulrig. And to the right, you have uh, the CMR rig, the continuous motion rig from West Group. So they have built a new concept rig at the uh, Ulrig uh, area. And uh, they will skid it over the, the wells. There are seven wells at uh, the Ulrig area, uh, both vertical and inclined wells. Long is uh, around two kilometers. So when they have uh, uh, tested it uh, thoroughly, uh, they will skid it over one of the wells and do uh, automatic tripping and uh, different um, tests uh, there. Anyway, so that's a new uh, new type of uh, concept uh, rig. Uh, anyway, what we, we aim to do here is that uh, we will combine these physical facilities with downhole simulations so that they just have uh, maybe a few meters of drill pipe uh, down into the hole, but they get the, the measurements that they get are from uh, uh, virtual wells. So all the measurements of uh, downhole pressure and uh, and uh, vibration and token drag and so on will be artificial. Uh, so this can be used for demonstration of technology on, especially on the rig floor, but and, and studies on work procedures and human factors and uh, so on. Uh, we, we will also uh, probably at some point uh, use this uh, link between uh, the Ulrig area and the Donos simulator. Use it. Uh, the other direction and control um, uh, drilling machinery at Ulrich. So this is this has been done before, but it's uh, it's something that we also uh, will probably do at some point, but not in the current scope. Um, this remote drilling is uh, is is not a part of virtual arena in a way. Uh, but this part, uh, I mean, going to, to one of the full-scale facilities and be able to get uh, artificial uh, uh, measurements, that will be available from 2018. So I have uh, one uh, movie that I would like to show. Um, so I will just uh, push a button and see what happens. There should be um, uh, some uh, sound in it and, uh, yeah. Let's see how it goes, just a few minutes. Oh no, what's happening? The pit volume is rising rapidly. It must be a gas kick. We must get it under control. Luckily, this was just a simulated operation in the virtual arena at Iris. The virtual arena is the unique combination of a full-scale offshore type drilling rig, ull rig, and a virtual reality simulator. The virtual arena gives scientists and engineers unprecedented possibilities to test new ideas in a realistic environment. Instead of going offshore, they enter the virtual arena and experience how new technology functions. The drilling control system and physical machinery at Ulrich can be used to perform drilling operations with only a few metres of drill pipe in the well, without doing any actual drilling. Instead, a virtual well is drilled using the simulator. What happens now depends on the driller's actions. The simulator generates artificial and realistic feedback in the form of pressures, temperatures, volumes, flow rates and much more. The simulator is based on complex physical models combined with efficient computational methods and all this runs in real time. It is the most advanced and realistic drilling simulator in the world. The combination of physical machinery and virtual reality is new and unique to the drilling world. It will enable research and innovation of new solutions that are far beyond state of the art. Various well incidents, which are difficult or even impossible to create realistically and safely in a physical lab or real operation, can be simulated, such as a gas kick. 
Offshore drilling crews can test complex operations in a safe environment in the virtual arena. Engineers and researchers can use the virtual arena to develop, test and qualify new technology in a safe and efficient manner. In the virtual arena, you can try and fail and dismiss flawed ideas at an early stage before it gets too expensive or puts anyone in danger. This combination saves time, increases safety, reduces costs and makes research more accessible. And last but not least, it's eco-friendly. But drilling and well technology isn't just limited to oil and gas production. It can also be used for CO2 storage, geothermal energy production and even drilling on Mars. The vision for the virtual arena is to be a world-leading laboratory within drilling and well operations. With a focus on research and innovation, we want to increase the rate of success of new technologies. So I just put the, the uh, address uh, down at the slide here so that you can um, uh, go ahead and, uh, and look uh, for yourself uh, afterwards if you want. So um, just to, to summarize uh, a little bit, uh, the vision of Virtual Arena now will, will be to, to develop a world-leading laboratory within drilling and well operations for stimulation of research and innovation and to increase the acceptance of new technologies. Uh, so I'm the uh, project uh, manager. Um, I represent the drilling and well modeling group at uh, IRIS. If you have any questions, uh, uh, if you are uh, interested in the project, what is the status of it, and when we are uh, when we will be ready to deploy it to to your university or your uh, company or anything, just. Uh, uh, yeah, give me a call or uh, email, and we will try to to um, also put some uh, news on the virtual arena uh, uh, web page uh, when that is up and running. So we are still uh, in the beginning uh, of the project, but we will uh, have uh, full speed uh, now uh, to to make it uh, ready by uh, by uh, summer next year at least. So that summarizes, that ends my uh, presentation. I hope you uh, have uh, got some impression of what Virtual Arena uh, will be and that you have, um, hopefully, uh, <laughs> a way that you can uh, make use of it. Uh, yeah, so I will just uh, invite you to, uh, to uh, ask questions. I'll be happy to answer any question. Fantastic. Well, excellent presentation. I'm going to pick up my headset here because we actually have some uh, background drilling noise here at BYU with the new engineering building that's being built in the background. So um, anyway, I ex excuse the uh, any background noise that comes from me. Um, so so excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, very well motivated uh, in the beginning and then some exciting developments uh, that you've been able to show there. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. As uh, Jan Nina mentioned, uh, if you'd like to put uh, your question into the chat window, uh, you can do so. Um, you can send me a chat privately or to the group, um, and uh, we'll just get started with some uh, questions. We have about 10 minutes uh, for some questions and answers. So, um, uh, so let's just get started with a couple that have uh, have come in already. Uh, you know, what are what are some of the main challenges in the development so far? You mentioned, you know, the need to simplify so it's, it's yeah. uh, available for a wide audience. What are some of the other challenges that are out there, uh, or, or is that the main challenge? That's the main challenge. It's definitely the main challenge, and it's also the key. Uh, the key to to make this successful is to to. Um, to make this user interface uh, very simple for the students, um, we believe that, uh, <laughs> or we have a plan for <laughs> how to do it, and also how, uh, also in a way that will please the the more uh, 
drilling experts that will that will use the the simulator. So, uh, uh, but but by far that is the the most challenging uh, task that we we have. The other tasks are more. Um, uh, yeah, building the 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 this uh, drilling um, control rooms is more uh, the, the right choice of uh, of uh, vendors of drilling control system of interfaces and so on. Uh, technical uh, challenge, but that's uh, that's all uh, solvable. So the the main t challenge is actually the the one that we are dealing with right now, and that is how to. To, to make a, a simple enough uh, interface uh, for for the students in order to to get people to to use it, because uh, of course people are used to to when they go to online <laughs> software or to Google or uh, whatever they're they're they used to to a very simple uh, interface. And I don't want to to <laughs> get into trouble in any way. And if they and if they feel that okay, this was not too much work, and uh, okay, I got a lot of uh, interesting results, how that can help me in my uh, tasks or my uh, in my uh, lecture or anything, I think that would be uh, give a great uh, value for students and uh, lecturers. Excellent. Okay, so. Um very, very good. Uh, I've got a, a, a question. Uh, let's see. Would we be using any data to begin with, or is this a completely predictive model? In the beginning, it's, it's a completely predictive model in the beginning. But what we plan to do uh, at a later stage, uh, of course, in uh, in collaboration with uh, with the industry, but we also at Iris we have a lot of test uh, test data from full um, from from field uh, trials and so on that we will probably uh, make available also through this through the virtual arena. So then you can sort of play. Either you could download the whole set, but ideally you can play uh, these uh, these uh, data sets. Um, in a way, so it's not it's not a thing that we will start with, but it's something that we will do and make available in virtual arena. Definitely. The the thing is okay, there, the thing is there. I just want to add because uh, it's sort of <laughs> it's easy to do it with the the data that we have sort of full control over, and we all we know more or less everything about the the operation, the actual operation, but. Usually, when we get uh, drilling data uh, from uh, from the oil companies or via the service providers and so on, we don't know exactly what happened. So then we have to do a lot of work to 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 get back in and uh, and uh, ask. And so there is a lot of preparation need to be done for each data set in order to make them sort of useful for uh, for uh, for uh, people. So, but definitely we will uh, we'll do that uh, also and uh, make it available through the, the virtual arena interface. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Well, we have a question from Henry. Uh, Henry, why don't you go ahead? Oh, okay. I was sent to you. Hey, Jan, uh, this is uh, Henry from uh, Chevron. Uh, I see your two uh, compared with uh, quite a few years ago when you visited my office. Uh, it looks like a much better. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, is the fundamental uh, solver, is that the drill same? Is it based on drill same, a new version of drill same? And also, what is the relationship uh, uh, you guys with the, uh, the company called the Drill Skill, or, you know, in the STEM angle? I forgot what's the company name. It's called the Drill Skill, is that right? Or the online performance drill skin. monitoring? Yeah, drill skin. Yeah. yeah. Or drill scene. Yeah. yeah, so there are uh, two. Um, there is a spin off company from Iris called uh, Secal or Secal. Uh, so they have, uh, they are now commercializing the Drill Scene software and the Drilltronics software. And the core, ba the core models of uh, this Drill Scene and Drilltronics are also EDIS developments. And some of some of it is uh, is um, 
uh, very much like this, the, what would be the main uh, models here, especially for well flow, but not for drill string mechanics. That would be totally different. So there will be some similarities, but some uh, differences. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this uh, tool could be out of the shelf uh, for the for the evaluation. Sorry. Uh, is this tool it? new tool? Could be the out of the shelf product for the customer evaluation. Yes, yeah, so we 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 have. Um, uh, if I understand you correctly, uh, because Sekal is, uh, is a strictly commercial uh, um, company, with, uh, uh, but it's partially owned by uh, Iris uh, with a few percent now. And uh, uh, a few years ago, our um, uh, software uh, was uh, sort of divided into different uh, parts, so they go along with their software, and we uh, have full uh, uh, right to to, um, to use uh, our uh, software and develop our models and develop them uh, further on. And uh, within a few years, more or less, the entire uh, um, code or models will be uh, will be. Uh, yeah, totally uh, uh, new, actually, because um, that's what, what how we work at Iris. We have a lot of ongoing research project, and what we aim for is to improve the models uh, constantly. So that means that we add or take away or improve uh, more or less uh, dynamically uh, throughout the year. Yeah, I'm not sure if that uh, answered no, your uh, Yeah, basically I ask is, uh, is that the tool available now so for us to evaluate? Yeah, yeah. so so if you if you uh, think of the drill scene, you, you mean the drill scene uh, software? Uh, not drill scene. I mean, is this one based on the drill scene, the one you showed us? No, so this one is not based on a, uh, the drill scene, but the core models uh, have similarities. Similarity, okay. Yeah, and this virtual arena is not uh, available at the moment, but it okay. will be after the beta version has been tested um, early next year. Okay, okay. So sure. around sure. Uh, summer 2017, around summer uh -huh. next year, it uh -huh. will be available. Okay, okay, that's what I want to know. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we have another question. It's, it's related to that, um, and, and you've done a good job uh, describing some of the underlying models and, and um, how those are perhaps similar to some uh, models that we've seen before. Um, what about uh, course curriculum? You know, this is this is an excellent tool. Um, is there any are there any plans uh, to develop uh, scenarios or or training, uh, you know, yeah. course curriculum as well? Yeah, there is. So we will need to do that for the university in Stavanger. So we need to do it for together with the, the lecturers there uh, for their courses, and that might be um, be transferred. I mean, uh, th that can be, of course, used by by others. So, but we have not uh, developed it yet. But we will uh, we will um, start looking at it uh, very soon. So okay, we, will we will probably do it the way that they will uh, now uh, next year when they will uh, take it into use in their uh, in a couple of their drilling courses at the University in Stavanger. We will sort of adopt this to the already existing uh, lectures that they already have, uh, but that will be a starting point. And, that, okay, and, and they will probably be happy to to share that with uh, with other universities. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, Roar, you had your microphone unmuted. Do you have a question as well? Um, let me go ahead and unmute. Say, I have a question, John, if I can interject. I wanted to follow on Henry's question. It's Lisa Brenskelly from Chevron. So, Jan, you had said that it would be available, did you say next summer in response to Henry's question? Yeah. Did I hear correct. that correctly? Okay, yeah. but are you talking then about next summer it would be available insofar as industry, it would be open to industry to pay a fee to use the virtual arena? Is that what you mean by available next summer? Yeah, that's, it. that's correct. 
So for the industry, there will need to be uh, some fee. I cannot I cannot say today how much uh, it will be, but that's the the price model that we need to have. Okay, but you're not talking about creating a new product such as you mentioned Drilltronics and Drill Scene, right? You're really that's talking correct. about a service as opposed to a product, just so we that's understand correct. the model. Yeah, that's correct. So we are not actually allowed we're not allowed to 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 make this into a commercial product. Because, because of the, the funding, the, right? Because of the funding, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure everyone was clear on, on your response that this is a service offering, not yeah. a commercial so that, yeah. product offering. Thank you. So so that's important here. And that is also why we need to be very strict on who is uh, actually using the, 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 uh, the virtual arena. So we need to have some sort of, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we need to know who is that the that the persons are actually using the software for for uh, their uh, academic work or uh, or uh, yeah university work or whatever. If the, if they use the free free uh, free license. Well, so I do have one other question related to industry use. If industry uses this for training. Training technically is not really a commercial use, so would that still be viewed in the same way by the funding source? Yeah, because uh, yeah, uh, as long as it is training um, for a particular from, from a particular, I mean, oil company or drilling company or service company, I think I would believe it would be. Uh, looked at as commercial uh, use. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I have one more question as well. Um, some of the work that we're doing is in automation um, and where we want a computer to interact with the simulator. Um, I know this is going to be through a web interface. Do you have any plans to open up something like an OPC connection or a Modbus or something like that where computers can talk? To the program, uh, receive you know these virtual measurements, uh, process it, uh, make decisions, and then send back uh, yeah. perhaps you know chokes and pumps and and other set points back to the uh, the simulator. So j just that question is you know you've done a great job describing how uh, you know a person could use this GUI interface. You know, what about computers um, and automation strategies? Yeah, so I didn't uh, go into the details there, but we will have uh, already from the beginning we will have a um, uh, MATLAB interface. So today uh, we have many students that use our models with a MATLAB uh, interface, uh, and we will continue to to have that. So as long as you have a MATLAB uh, account, you can you can use your if you have uh, your own algorithms, control algorithms for controlling a choke or pump or uh, whatever, you can interact with the simulator via MATLAB interface. Okay, so that would be, yeah, that would be, uh, be included from the beginning. Okay, great. Okay, so are there any other questions? We're about out of time right now. Maybe time for one more question if there's anything pressing. Um, that anybody would like to ask. Okay, well, very good. Well, thank you. Uh, this has been a very, uh, very fantastic presentation, um, and uh, I've appreciated the overview. I, I, I thought the question and answers, uh, you know, very well done. Um, so thank, you, thank you, everybody, for your questions and comments. Um, and uh, we plan to have the next session in about a month. Um, I'll also send out the, um, uh, you can see the link there for the virtual arena uh, if you'd like to go on there. It looks like there's a lot more information uh, about virtual arena, and we look forward to next summer when uh, when this is going to be available more generally. So uh, thank you, Jan uh, Inar, and, and uh, very good presentation. Thank you. Thank you all for listening. Have a nice, great day.